Hi guys, Jordan with Motion Array, and today we're gonna show you how to end a song wherever you want. So let's jump into it. So let's say you have a song that you wanna end before the song naturally finishes on its own. There's a couple different options that you have available, including splicing the true end in earlier on the same beat so that you can't tell the difference. We've actually done a tutorial on that already, and it's this one here, and you can find a link to it in the description below. But it's very possible that you might not like the end of the song that you've got right out of the gate. Like this one, for example. It ends a lot more slow and gradually than I'd like. I want it to end with a quick punch. I'd actually much prefer it to end on one of these downbeats that occurs naturally in the song. I want to show you a quick and easy way to end your song at the exact spot that you want. And here's the basic overview of how we're going to accomplish this. We're going to start by finding the right spot where we want to end our song. We're going to set it up so that we can extend it with reverb, and we're going to add the reverb effect and dial it in. And then we're going to make sure that the whole effect meshes with the original audio. So to start with, let's find the end of our song. Keep in mind that it's much easier to end a song naturally on beat one. What do I mean by that? Well, sort of like this. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, one. So you can see what I mean by it being on the first beat of the song. So what's next? Let's take this part of the song that we want to end on and cut it so that that's where our audio file ends. So we're left with something like this. It doesn't sound right at all, but that's okay. It doesn't take much to make it start sounding correct. Next up, let's take the end here and start stretching it out until we get to just before the point where the next beat or a noticeable part of the song starts to come in. Think about it like we're going to be taking a small section of just a couple milliseconds and stretch it out to sound really long. But we can only take what already exists. So ask yourself if you like the sound that exists at that given moment. As soon as a part starts to come in that you don't like, or that you would think would take away from the idea of it being the ending, make sure it cuts before that. With that done, take the point immediately after the downbeat of beat 1. You can usually distinguish each beat as the largest audio spike of each section. And make your cut there. So you should now have your main section of audio, and then a small section cut to be on its own. And nothing should sound too different at this point, but now we're going to take this clip and nest it. Right click, and go to nest. Now we have this clip sitting in its own sequence. So in our main sequence here, you can see that our ending to our song can't stretch out any longer. So we're just going to fix that by going back into our nested sequence, holding Alt or Option and dragging this clip to duplicate it to a new layer. And we're just going to disable it because we don't actually need to hear it. We're just going to stretch it out as long as we can. The entire purpose of this disabled section here is just to make our nested sequence in our main composition able to stretch out much longer. This will give the reverb effect that we're going to add later time to ring out. And lastly, we're just going to add a quick fade out in our nested sequence. This fade out doesn't have to be very long at all. You just have to make sure that there's no abrupt harsh cutoff. Now back in our main composition, you can see that this lets us stretch out our nested sequence even longer. Now it's time to add our reverb effect. And when we add it, it's going to have all this room to play with and reverberate out. So let's now go to add the effect. We're going to search in our effects panel for studio reverb. Drag and drop it onto your nested sequence. And you can start to make this effect come to life. And right off the bat, you might not notice a whole lot different. But we're going to show you the particular parameters to play with and some baseline amounts to get you where you need to go. Click on your audio clip and then go up to effect controls. And hit the edit button to go to your reverb controls. 
The main characteristic that's going to help us get the effect that we want is called decay. Your mileage might vary, but I like to set this anywhere between 5500 and 6500. We're just going to stick with 5500 though for now. And already this is what it sounds like. It's already feeling like a natural end to the song. Nice. But there's a couple things that we can do to really make this effect reach its maximum potential. Down here you can see that we have sliders for wet and dry output levels. Simply put, the more wet you make your sound, the more it's going to reverberate out. So if we take the dry output all the way up and the wet output all the way down, this is what we get. And conversely, if we switch it up, Now, even though you might think that putting the wet output to its max would be the best, it might not actually keep the tone that you're going for with your music. So what I found is that having a dry output of about 34 and a wet output of about 26 seemed to work pretty well for this particular song. But play around with it and see what feels best for your song in particular. And lastly, we want to make our sound as full and big as possible. And with the default settings, our low end is getting cut out a little bit. And the culprit is this slider here. This low frequency cut is literally cutting out our low frequencies at this particular range. So the lower we drop it, the more of that deep bass sound we're going to keep. Nice. And lastly, we're going to round out our sound by increasing the room size to about 85, increasing the width to about 75, increasing dampening to 91, and decreasing diffusion to 16. And with that done, let's add a quick constant power fade so that the end of our song fades into the reverb effect. Just make sure that it's really short so that it doesn't bring the music back in during the following beat. And with that, this is our final result. And guys, that's how you add a quick reverb effect to make a custom ending for your song. This effect is really helpful when you're working with royalty-free music. And here at Motion Array, we've got thousands of royalty-free music tracks for you to check out. But thanks so much for taking the time to watch this video. I hope you found it helpful. If you did, as always, we've got tons of other tutorials here at MotionArray.com. Thank you so much for watching, and I can't wait to see you in the next video.